I mean, it's an eight kettles here. Those stop signs knew about the femboys. No use, kid. I heard that before. Kid, what they get you on? Destruction of public property. And creating a nuisance. You guys got any stories? A few moments later. And that's what I said. Radio? I thought you said gravy. Ha 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 ha. Solo raccoon dude. What'd you do before this? I taught people about subcultures. Think maybe you can teach us some? I don't see why not. And seeing as at least one of you is a bald white dude, I think I have the right topic. The story will continue after this. Today we're talking about peckerwood. Yeah, you heard that right. It's a term. YouTube, please don't take my two cell away from me. The term came about as a switch of the word woodpecker by the seven black community, who themselves were referred to as blackbirds. See all the bird watching we're doing? Good thing you watched that video about bird watching. You did watch it, right? What is he talking about? Now, the black community used the term to describe honkies in the south. The word came of being in the early 1800s, and was used to refer to the white prisoners and just poor whites in general in many locations up through the middle of the 20th century. But it would be around the beginning of the 1920s that the term was linguistically reclaimed by white southerners, white identitarian gangs, and later, the Peckerwood subculture. Now, on a brief tangent, linguistic reclamation is the process of a group using a word once considered a slur to refer to themselves. A good example includes which referred to the community, and is now used by the to describe themselves. It wouldn't be till the later half of the 20th century that prison gangs picked up the usage of I mean Peckerwood. Which brings me into gang culture itself. Easily defined, gang culture is... Uh... I can't put this easily. So here's what the feds and the states have to say about defining gangs. A gang is a group of people who associate and gather with each other to act in criminal activities or who use force or intimidation to further said criminal activities. Crimes are committed to enhance or preserve a group's power, reputation, or resources. Characteristics of a gang could include a set of rules to be followed for joining or acting in the group, recurring assembly, protection of the group from others, laid claim to an area and actions on that land to secure it from or take territory from other groups, and also have an identifiable structure. Culturally, gangs are hard to define, because they usually incorporate poor urban, immigrant, and sometimes rural cultures, or even part of subcultures like sports fans or bikers. But since I promised you a definition, gang culture is much like that one click of latchkey kids every high school has. They do bad things, mostly because they were raised very independently or poorly, and do so because it fulfills what they really want in life. Be that belonging, or things to fill the void of missing parents. And while I could go on to some psychological research into why people join gangs, it would make this video way too long for the script writing team. Actually, since I'm in a jail, do you guys have a library? I could probably get some books there. Oh, raccoon. Come here. How lovely. Well, guess I'll be back, guys. Kid, you got a lawyer? Nope. Not since the Femboys episode. The what now? You know, the video about Femboys I did on this channel about an episode or two ago. Is what caused me to crash, and my lawyer became a Femboy and I have no idea where he ran off to. Okay, I'm gonna level with you. I don't know what you're talking about, and if you keep this up... At least watch the video. Alright. Wait, how the... Jameson. Did you get that in here? Barry, he has connections in the force. Hand it over. Contraband. Aww, I need that for my notes. The hell are you taking notes on? Peckerwood gangs and such. Why would you be doing that? Well, you see, I have this series on YouTube. It's about subcultures and such. It's where that one video about femboys you just watched came from. And the whole concept is pretty interesting. I somehow got into subculture stuff from looking at a different series I was going to start that was based off... Alright, hang on. Kid, you have any gang affiliations? No, but I know stuff. Kid, you got any affiliations with the gentleman in that cell there? Nope, we just tell each other stories. Like how Randolph, the guy with the lovely pagan tattoo, was telling me about the time he helped burn on a cinema. Hey son, let me tell you about your friends. In the simplest terms, they're involved in some of the worst prison gangs in the United States. Like who? For example, your buddy Randy is part of the Aryan Brotherhood. The Aryan Brotherhood, founded in 1964, the Aryan Brotherhood started in the California penal system. Coming straight out of San Quentin in 64, the name Aryan Brotherhood comes from the idea of the Aryan in the 1940s Nazi ideology. Originally, Aryan Brotherhood members were required to be part Irish, and many of their tattoos still hold some Irish symbology. The original idea behind the formation of the Brotherhood was to have a white gang to counter many of the black and Hispanic gangs being housed with them following American desegregation policies of the decade. 
Initially, the gang was a small organization consisting of a hundred or so Californian inmates, and by modern day are at a peak of 20,000 members in and out of the system. By the 1970s, the state of California was forced to separate all gangs in state prisons to separate facilities due to ongoing gang violence. The Aryan Brotherhood were sent to Chico State and reorganized, changing their hierarchy from a respect-based ranking system to a selected leader. By the mid-70s, they had grown to a national level and had developed in two ways. Firstly, they began illegal substance operations, selling drugs, contracting hits, and establishing gambling dens within the system, as well as expanding to a hierarchy of a more federal level, with one man being in charge of all prisons, ranking down to prison leaders and their subordinates. The Brotherhood was split in the mid-80s due to conflict of interest around the idea of unbiased killing, that being killing of those who were not offenders, such as family or friends. By the 90s, they moved out of the prisons and into the streets, trafficking illegal substances. Today, they have 100 known inmates in the 30,000 that make up California's prison population. We have 20,000 members nationally. They operate in tandem with and against other gangs, chiefly other white gangs of similar ideologies. Seeing as such, the Aryan Brotherhood have protected such influential people as Charles Manson and John Gotti. But with the great actions of our proud government, helmed by Ross Perot and law enforcement, the Aryan Brotherhood will be a thing of yesteryear. Any questions, kid? What year did that video come out? 1991. And what about Cuball and Shanks? They're as tame as mute Girl Scouts. Kid, we don't have a VHS tape about the Nazi lowriders. So let me make it clear to you who they are. The Nazi lowriders are another Peckerwood gang, based entirely in Los Angeles and several counties in Texas. While not as known as the Aryan Brotherhood, the Riot, as they called themselves, have been present since the 1970s, only coming to our attention in the 90s. While they have been reduced greatly in the state of California and their prison system, they are still active and violent in Southern California. They smuggle arms, deal drugs, and uh, are very racist. <laughs> Funnily enough, the upper tiers of the Nazi lowriders aren't led by white-blooded neo-Nazis. Many of the upper echelons are of Hispanic descent, but they're still just dangerous as groups such as the Aryan Brotherhood. Okay, so both these gangs are sending like the model for Peckerwood then. That is correct. There's nothing that really separates Peckerwood gangs from other gangs aside from identitarian politics. They run a lot of the same operations that gangs of other races and ethnic backgrounds do, but the Aryan Brotherhood and Nazi Little Riders are models for white identitarian prison gangs. Am I free to go back to that cell? Just give us a minute, we're waiting for the doors to reset. Bit of a system flaw that could be easily exploited in one of them movie breakout montages from the 80s. Oh, well if only we had the budget for that. What? Spoons can't dig through concrete. So little raccoon dude, where were we at? Something about, what was it? Oh right, I almost forgot I was going to tell you about gang culture itself. Gang culture in general is what makes a gang a gang. And going off what our friends at the Office of Justice program say, a gang consists of people of common language, territory, or culture. Wait, so gang culture goes with the culture it comes from? Yep. Gangs are like community groups. And much like community groups, they blend the culture of the area around them with their activities. Like how your local dad basketball team all wear khakis because they live in a suburban development five miles from a Whole Foods. So is there a difference between gangs and local groups? There indeed is. What makes it a gang is the participation in illegal activities like drug dealing, homicides or hate crimes, even vigilante actions. If the police will arrest you and your friends for it, and you do it a lot as a group, you may be in a gang. As a subculture, gangs are largely based on demographics. Not like those niche, semi-related to subculture gimmick gangs you see in films like The Warriors, though. Usually they are racial or ethnic minorities in less than well-off urban areas, or even sometimes rural parts of the country. And while we are covering white identitarian prison gangs, there are also black, Hispanic, and Asian gangs fighting against and alongside them outside the prison walls. Of course, Peckerwood gangs exist outside of jails, but the culture they have comes mainly from the inside. The Aryan Brotherhood started as a counter to many of the non-white gangs in California's incarcerated population, and their culture fared as the identity politics they play by. But like I rambled about earlier with psychoanalytics and all, gangs form out of a perceived necessity by individuals. Most of these gangs are identitarian. They rely on the single standpoint, we are this specific group of people, and we like to crime. And this gets me into another question. Why do they do that crime thing? Well, this is going to be a weird thing to put into the episode template we make. But nevertheless, the show must go on. So, for the sake of simplicity, we divided what we found in our research into two whys. Why people join gangs, and why they are gangs based on identity. Why they join is a pretty complicated reason. People are complex creatures, after all. One of the clear reasons people join gangs is because they were dealt a bad hand in the game of life. A lot of gangs come from poor working class or immigrant communities, 
and are made up of people who participate in illegal activities and control territory. So one could see this as individuals protecting their communities, while also selling drugs and shooting anyone in a different color. Or as youths with nowhere to go, turning to the streets to make it big. Think a neighborhood watch. Well, more if your neighborhood watch started selling crack and shooting everyone wearing green. How prison gangs come about is more out of a sense of protection and preservation of identity. It's why a lot of those gangs are divided by race or ethnicity. And while we can understand lower class and minority groups will eventually have a few who will turn to crime, the question is now, why don't they all just team up together in a syndicate of organized crime? Well, that answer is simple, because identitarian politics are more fun in gang form. Now, it gets more complicated than that. Many gangs usually form out of communities that are homogeneous, so black gangs in black neighborhoods, white gangs in white neighborhoods, and so on. But where race and identity stuff comes into play is when these groups meet, and more often than not, that's on the streets or in prison. The innate tribalism in human psychology usually creates these us-versus-them mentalities where people will find one detail about someone else and hate it. So in prison, many gangs form out of a need to defend themselves from each other, mostly for racial reasons there. The other reason gangs are present in the prison system is because of arrests of gangs off the street. These gangs continue their activities in prisons, leading to some hatred being carried over into the system. Anyway, to simplify the word loaf you were just fed, Prison gangs form because identity politics of race and ethnicity are easier to play on in prison. While people may be different on the outside, gang culture carries over in a lot of places. And if how gangs interact with each other is anything, we may see some odd alliances or demographic shifts with gangs in the future. Odd alliances? Robot Coon dude, do you think the race war will ever come? I am not qualified enough to answer that. It's more of an enemy of my enemy mentality that I have seen in some gangs. A race war won't change anything. You don't want a race war. You don't want a race war. Raccoon, come with me. Visitor. Barry, Barry, Barry. Hey, Barry. I am not Barry. I your lawyer. Uh, Jerry. Uh, Volseki. Hi, it's me, Barry. Barry Wickle, your agent. I know, and you found me in your trash can. Why do you have to say that every time? It sounds cool. Anyway, I talked with the blue healers over there. They said that you just have to go free... If you say some things against Pecklewood, I don't know how your vehicular assault on that stop sign got you tied to this gang culture, but that fits Jim and Loud over there. Said you'd be free to go if you talked to him, right? Now. Kid, thanks for agreeing to talk more. So, what criticisms do you have for us to use on these Pecklewoods? Do we really need to have criticism about gangs? I mean, we try to write about each subculture as positively as we can, but glorifying gang culture is something else. Gangs commit 13% of all murders in the U.S., be it from homicidal actions or a deal gone wrong. One in two violent crimes are gang-related, and nearly 2% of all gangs are youth gangs. This applies more to street gangs, but some prison gangs like Peckerwood do have their tentacles and juvie centers. And that has led to nearly 10% of American youths having joined a gang by their 20s. Of course, gangs are very nuanced. And while sometimes they're overblown positively in some forms of exploitative media, gang culture is usually a cycle of negative enforcement. They see themselves as insular because of the lack of outside help to a community and seek to help keep it that way to keep someone else in power. Anyone who wants to change things for the better or worse has to do a lot of fighting, and anyone who wants to leave may never get to. I'll just stop there. I think most of this video has been written from an anti-gang standpoint anyway. That works, kid. And while it's stuff we already know, it'll be good to have someone associated with men like your cellmates speak out against it. Your bond's been posted. I'll escort you out of the facility. The state will decide your sentence at the appointed date. This all seems off for standard procedure, but I'm up for changing things. Kid, you still got a lot of fun legal process to go to. We're not going to detain you any longer. New law from the governor. So that's Peckerwood, a group of men in the prison system who started an identitarian gang based off of a slur for white people and the dreams of Aryanism in California's prisons. They, like a lot of gang cultures, seem to not be that different from other gangs in the U.S., aside from the amount of swastikas everyone has, but they have left an impact on popular culture and the underground world of drug trades. It's a bit odd for us to cover a prison subculture in this series, but we try to look at all the different groups and how they build into the puzzle that is our modern world. This all the defendant has to say? Yes, your honor. Kid, we're gonna give you community service. Do you have any experience in uh, making, what are they, vidges? Do I?
kid, you don't understand. I have to make $12,000 a year just to pay off my truck. <laughs> my wife goes and says that I got no pecker. <laughs> that is correct. 